We are approaching one year since the FAA and other regulators around the world grounded the 737 MAX. Since then, airlines and Boeing have lost billions and the costs keep climbing. Phil LeBeau joins us now with more. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Mike. You know, a year ago, people were saying, well, I'm sure it'll only be grounded a few weeks, maybe a few months at the most. No, we're looking at a one year anniversary mark, if you will, for the grounding of the 737 MAX. That'll happen next week. Here are the costs that Boeing has outlined and a Bank of America estimate in terms of what it believes the true cost will be. Production, they're both on the same level there. Customer payments, we're talking about payments to airlines and leasing companies that have been unable to use the 737 MAX. Bank of America believes that's going to be higher than the $8.3 billion that Boeing has allocated there. And then you have the carried inventory effect. Altogether, Bank of America estimates it's at least $23.5 billion that the MAX has cost Boeing, and it could be even higher in the future. I'm certain the contracts that they had with the airlines didn't protect them for it because they probably weren't thinking it was going to happen. So if you take that on top of the, the, the impact that it's had on the airlines, it adds up. And, and the longer it goes on, the pile of airplanes that's late gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So the cost per month gets bigger and bigger. For the big three U.S. carriers that are using the 737 MAX, we're talking about Southwest, American, and United. They've pushed off return to service until at least August, or in the case of United, September. Remember, Boeing expects the, the plane to be ungrounded by mid-year. They're not giving a specific date, but let's say June, July, or something like that. That would potentially allow Southwest American and United to get the plane back into service, depending on how quickly they can do training for the pilots who will be flying those planes. As you take a look at shares of Boeing, remember, they have yet to schedule a certification flight. That's the next big milestone. After the certification flight, there's a couple of other milestones as well before the FAA potentially could sign off on this plane returning to service. Hey, Phil, I was thinking about it, and part of the funds that all of these airlines have been paid by Boeing or been agreed to be paid was because they were going to be missing out on a lot of passengers they could be flying if they Correct. had the 737 MAX. Yep. Fast forward to what we're looking at today with all kinds of flight cancellations, people not going yep. places, them raining back in. Does that change the details at all in terms of what they can ask Boeing to pay them? No. I don't think it does, because they're looking at this and saying, OK, even if with coronavirus, what you're looking at with the 737 MAX were specific routes. Most of those, if not all of them, would have been here in the United States. And while there has been some softening in demand domestically, it is, generally speaking, held up. What you're seeing in terms of the cancellations and uh, basically sitting down aircraft uh, mm -hmm. for Delta, American and United, all of those, generally speaking, are international routes. Now, there may be some schedules where a particular route where they were going to fly five times in a day, and now they might bring it back to four because the market has softened up a little bit over the next couple of weeks.